riding down Highway 61 Sides of the roads all lined with fields Nothing but sunset in the windshield Feel it as soon as I ride into town This is where I go to slow down Miles and miles of soybeans and corn I'm in the place where the blues was born Hey everybody, Brad Chapel back with the Cropper Connection. I got uh, two of my good buds here, Todd Huckabee, Chris Bushot. What's up? You know, we're going to discuss something that we hadn't touched before, and you know, we're going into the spring crappie fishing season, and uh, something that's real deadly. And uh, you know, I look at this technique, and I think it screams Todd Huckabee to me. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. You know, I've I, I've, I've been using slip corks for. A long long time and a lot of people do think that it's just a springtime deal yeah because all oh, they're up shallow and you got to pitch up there but man a lot of people are missing the boat now you know you're you're hearing all of this about what what live scope and mm-hmm. i promise hunter this will be the last time i say live scope in this <laughs> podcast yeah. we're trying to get away from that but these guys are talking about casting yep talking about oh longer rods longer rods you here know, comes like, the goods you know like yeah. w- when's it gonna end like are we gonna have a 25 foot rod or a 30 foot rod mm-hmm. my dad his buddies they've been doing this forever mm-hmm. and that is tried and true slip cork yeah it's that easy i mean even these fish that and it's it's kind of funny to me whenever i hear guys talk about it and they're like man we was at lake x Mm -hmm. and these fish wouldn't let us get closer than 20 foot on these stumps visible stumps whether they were cypress trees or whatever they were right they were shallow Mm -hmm. they were five in five foot of water two foot deep they would not let us get close to them but we couldn't cast because it was so shallow and everything else dude right there yep that's the ticket oh because people are like oh you know i'd mess up and i'd land it on their head or whatever Take that joker right there, slip court, mm-hmm. set it at the depth you want, throw it way past him, Yep. and just reel it back to him. And now all of a sudden it's sitting right there in front of him. It's the perfect presentation. Trust me, you can't dead stick a bait any more on a calm day than with a slip court. Mm-hmm. It is it's there as long as you want it to be. Right, inevitably. And even in the summertime, last, last year in the summer at Ufala, our fish got really, really hammered. Mm-hmm. more boat traffic than ever because everybody was fishing because everybody was self-quarantining at the lake yeah, yeah right all of our ramps were open all of our campgrounds were open there was more people than i've ever seen and these fish they wouldn't spook out of a steak bed or a brush pile but they, mm-hmm. they just wouldn't eat right i don't care minna you could catch a few early morning then they'd stop mm-hmm. I mean, you could take this right here now to be honest we weren't using plastics at that time we were using minnas but we was using like a raptor jig head i take this off take the body off yeah i'm to to me if if people talk about tipping a jig with a minna yeah i don't know how y'all feel about it if i'm gonna have to use a minna just Mm -hmm. use a minna use a minna yeah i'm with you on that 100 because i don't like all the extra bulk really so take that off Mm -hmm. put your minna on there just run it right through the top of his head that's that's what i was going to ask you is how you going to hook that minna then oh i hook him right through the top of the head right through the skull Mm -hmm. where he's hooked on there good but we would just stay back off of them stake beds and brush piles, mm-hmm. pitch that slip cork out there, and it was it was really great as a guide because I could power pole down. I could go to the back and make a sandwich. <laughs> just tell if, them to fire. If if, if 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 one of them wanted to actually watch the graph and watch the fish eat, 
they could point the trolling motor at where their slip cork was, but the other dude was in it just as much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, we've, yeah. we've, we've lost that now. Yeah. Like, if, 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 if you and I go fishing together. The one on the trolling motor and the graph is the one doing the most of the right. catching. And I'm just like, well, I might as well just go to the back. Yeah. Unless you're going to let me run your trolling motor. And that's what's hard about guiding is, is now it's become just kind of a one-man show. Yeah. Like rotate through yeah. or whatever, and I hate it. But with a slip cork, even though they may not be watching that graph, they still have a visual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can't tell me that. Who don't like seeing a cork go down? <laughs> it's, it's it's just like a topwater bite yeah. with a bass. Yeah. It, 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 I ain't never thought about it like that. It is just like watching a topwater. Well, I mean, not just like it, but it's as close as you can get. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people it's, people loved it. So I, I did it last summer, kind of out of desperation. Mm-hmm. But it absolutely blew my mind how many people were commenting because if we took a picture on the water and the guy's holding a fish and he's got the rod in his hand and people are seeing a slip cork. Mm-hmm. They're like, I can do that. They're like, you're slip corking in the summertime? And I'm like, you're dang right I am. I think you know, notice last year it would get real slick. You know, no, no, I'm talking about the heat of the summer. Yeah. And you were praying for a breeze and those fish were so spooky. Mm-hmm. But you could find them on timber. and But as soon as you got really closer than 25 foot they would just ease off yeah and that would be deadly to you know even if you dropped on him they would just blow out Mm -hmm. when they'd hear the yeah yeah and the other thing that i like about it you know we were talking about a bait staying so stationary not moving well if if you give a guy a really really good 10 or 11 foot jigging pole Mm -hmm. with braid Mm -hmm. on it and you put a minnow on the end of that jig they're going to take it away from those finicky fish nine times out of right. ten. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. They're, they're, they're going to feel. 100%. They're going to feel as soon as that fish comes up there. Oh, they're yanking yep. away from him. Spook that fish. He don't let to eat it. Well, with a with a slip cork, you throw it out there and it's sitting there and it would start moving some. And of course, I was kind of fibbing to him and be like, "No, no, that's just your minnow moving," which it <laughs> wasn't because yeah. we mm-hmm. pretty much killed him when we stuck him yeah. to the skull. What that was, that was that fish kind of figuring out if he wanted it or not. Right. But then they were allowing that fish the time to actually suck that bait all the way in and take it. And then once they'd see it start moving off, then you set the hook, you got them. And there's also fewer misses, believe mm-hmm. it or not. Fewer you, lost fish. Yeah. Your, your hookup ratio with a slip cork is really, really, really high. You know, I wish I could say I'd do it a lot, but, you know, I've heard of guys just wearing them out, and I, I've got to do it more. It's it's a blast, man. <laughs> I've got to do it more. I'm one of the crowd that I pretty much only do it in the springtime just when I'm just fun fishing. But, I mean, I love it. And once I do it for brim, but, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much the only time I've ever done it. I ain't never thought about doing it in the summer. But. Yeah, I, can, I can see, like I said, that last summer when those fish were so spooky. Uh, technical difficulty. <laughs> Action. So, <clears throat> real quick, just show you how I set this up. Yeah, yeah. Th- this is simple. A-, a lot of people use the the little straw that's got the knot and all the line right, and right. all that stuff. I hate it. They come unraveled. They will not tighten up against braid. Mm-hmm. It's impossible. Or they're, small they're, diameter. Right. They're going to slide up and down that sucker. You know, you've got to tighten it up. And if you tighten it up and you cut the ends off where it's not – because it will get knotted up if you mm-hmm. don't cut those tag ends off. Mm-hmm. Well, if you tag, cut those tag ends off, then when it loosens up, which it's going to, mm-hmm. you can't pull it tight. So that's why I use these little rubber bobber stops. And you can't see them, but a lot of people know what what they look like. They actually come on this little, on a little ring. Let me see them. I'll show it to the camera for the guys. Yeah. And you just run your, you just run your line through there, pull one on. So this is the way I rig it up. I've got one up here, which is adjustable. You can slide it up, change your depth however you want. At that point, of course, your slip cork, once you throw this out and this jig sinks, this cork's going to go up to that point to stop it. Mm-hmm. Okay. I also put one down here with a bead, and the reason why I do that is because I like to t- tie a loop knot. Mm-hmm. And if you don't put this down here, most of these slip corks that have that hole in the bottom, right. it will go down and over that over, knot, over the and it will stick. That knot Then it won't there, float down. The jig right, won't go the, down. The, 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 with the light jig, there's not enough force for it to come yeah. out. So, you know, take a couple extra steps and have that bead on there, and 
that's it. It is seriously that simple, and you can adjust it 10 feet or mm -hmm. one inch, half inch, but that's it in a nutshell. And, you know, people, we were talking yesterday about a lot of people now think, oh, I got to have a boat and I have to have 20,000 in electronics mm -hmm. and everything else. But truth be told, you fall in the springtime, you come down there, the banks are lined with people. Yeah. You come down there in the summertime, there's still some spots where there's a lot of bank fishermen. And you go below the dam, there's a lot of fishermen down there below the dam. I was about to say. D just like I was talking about, went by Grenada last year. I know there was 80 people fishing oh, below the dam. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. And, and they're all slip corking. Yeah. They're all catching fish, you yeah. know. The, the, this is something where I, I think it all... You know, I think everything goes in a full circle, but I think that at some point people will get back to the roots. Yep, and just the enjoyment of it without the competition. Yep. Well, you know, it goes back to I just like seeing the court go down. Oh, I remember God. that when I started crappie fishing, it was with cane poles, bobbers, Man. and minnows, and sitting there watching corks. Yep. And I mean, it must have worked because I fell in love doing it. So I mean, yep. I had that much entertainment even as a kid going and just something about watching that cork dance and poof, disappear just, oh yeah it still lights my fire even thinking about it <clears throat> oh I, if 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 you were from say february i'm not talking spawn i'm not talking yeah. about when these fish are shallow but from february till probably july or august mm -hmm. if you were to come to eufaula and if you were to have a tournament where you allowed pros in their boats guys fishing on their docks but you also allowed bank fishermen to fish mm -hmm. they'd stripe us dude and you know what they're doing it with they're doing it with a slip cork with a minnow rig mm -hmm. <laughs> it's got two wires off of it it's got the swivel that you attach your bell sinker to right and they're throwing about 15 or 20 of these suckers just out double minnow there rigs. and they're kicked back against a oh nice and warm rock watching <laughs> corks life. go under and they're they're they'd stripe us you know i, I yeah because they're not they're not out there making a lot of noise scaring these fish you know right. letting them come to them it's it's so weird now that we've got the electronics that we've got and i've talked about it in some of my seminars i did two years ago now i see why so many of our lake records in oklahoma are caught by bank fishermen mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. you know why because they done not spooking they done through 17 corks out there you got one 34 of, minners. One of them's that deep. The other one's that deep. The other one's that deep. And they're they're randomly adjusting their depth on stuff to try to figure out wh which Where ones are at. catching them. Yeah. And they're throwing them out there. And then, like I say, they're, they're just sitting back. Okay. Those fish out there are not getting spooked uh, after the initial barrage of mm -hmm. corks and stuff. That stuff's just sitting out there. Yep. And then after everything calms back down, them bigger fish are like, huh. Yeah, Give me that package go. right there, Tom. We'll show the package for people can they can do their natural thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. What size line do you like to run when you're like casting a slip cork at stumps, stuff like that? What size line? Ten. Ten. Got you. Mono, Mono floral, pull it out. Braid. I'm, I'm, I'm using that. Um, it's a fluoro. I got you. I got you. Um, I'm, I'm running K9 fluoro yeah. in ten for the casting. If we're using the longer rods, because a lot of times even with slip corking, I'll get lazy and don't want to rig. A short rod up. Yeah. So I'll just stick with my ten and a half foot rod with braid. Mm -hmm. and, and at that point, we're seriously just like pulling out line and pitching. Pitching to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Pitching. And and in that, I'm using twenty pound braid. I got but you, you know, the, the other cool thing I like about it is, from a guide standpoint, they're not getting hung up. Nope. <laughs> right. Nope. So I got a brush pile, and I look out there with your electronics, and you're like, okay, the very top of this, the highest branch is. Five foot. Yep. I'm setting that sucker at five or four foot, yep. 11 inches, yep. and I'm letting them that bait drift across the top. And those fish will come out of and to eat it mm -hmm. where they wouldn't anything else because it's sitting there for so long. Yep. It's just sitting up there just like a tiny little morsel, and they just can't stand it. It's just, I, I can yum, see yum. that. Yeah. yeah. Let me get that. Yeah. yeah. Like I say, you know, everybody talks about, oh, man, you had to dead stick it. You've said it. Yeah, he oh, yeah. Said it. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Oh, man, you had to hold yeah. it right in front of their nose. That's dead sticking it. 
Well, tell me how, h- how you're actually holding it right in front of their nose when the boat's moving and your rod's moving. And, and I'm moving. Yeah. Yep. yep. I mean, I guarantee you all three of us, now that we've gotten older, <laughs> we're, we're not a steady. No, no. And I, I've started noticing watching guys in here demo stuff, like tie knots. And mm-hmm. they sit there like a dead gum mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, there's no way that you can hold a bait as still as this cork. Nope. Yeah. I agree. And what cork are you speak? using there? Uh, this actually is a thill. Mm-hmm. Um, me and Barry Morrow actually helped them design that years ago when I was with Lindy. And I like – I I still use them to the – today even though i have nothing to do with this company i like them because like this one on there says a 16th yeah at a 16th no at, at a 16th with a 16th mm-hmm. ounce head this is neutral buoyancy right and it's balsa and, you know in, any of them work a cheap foam one works just as fine i prefer the balsa mm-hmm. because they stand up mm-hmm. and the what i do not like about the I don't even foam's not the right word. It's styrofoam, I guess. Yeah, it's yeah. Okay, if one of those styrofoam ones ends up anywhere in your rod box next to any plastic oh, God. bait, yep, stuck. Yep, you're done. You're gonna have the impression and the bait stuck to it. Yep, and it also once that starts breaking down, if it gets on your carpet, it's it's uh, it's, it's it's just mm-hmm. they're a mess. Yeah. I can tell you what, from this personal standpoint, I, I I'm gonna leave today. <laughs> I'm going to grab me some and actually, you know, I'm going to do some more of it this year. I just thought about something, and i tell you how much I love seeing a bobber go down. I had to disqualify myself from a tournament, an ACT tournament, because of that right there. I had We was fishing the Wachita River, and I was fishing by myself. I think Jay had to work or something like that. And I found some fish up the bayou, like way up the bayou, and I was catching them pitching the brush with a slip bobber, slip cord. And I was having a ball. I'm talking during practice. I mean, catching big fish. Well, come the day of the tournament, it was when the time changed. And you know how sometimes the tournaments get funny. They'll start 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. I was so pumped up about I'm fixing to go fish a tournament and do good. I felt like because I was on pretty good fish. Slip cork and just old school. Well, I fired in there and I had like, I don't know. I probably had like an hour. I thought I had 30 minutes. So I was hammering down the bayou. I get there, I put trolling motor out, and I go, and I go right. I thought it was time to fish right then. I go straight to the bank, and I caught seven good ones in about ten minutes. I'm talking about I was lighting them up, and I was pumped. And there was like four or five guys around me. Nobody was fishing. I was like, what, what are they doing? They're still getting their stuff ready. <laughs> and I, I, I just went back to fishing because I wasn't paying no more attention to them. I said, sorry about your luck. I'm lighting them up. So I was just stroking them. I went on in, done pretty good. Come to find out. I started 30 minutes before time. Had to do the old early bird. Mm-hmm. Early bird gets the worm. That's how fired up I was about that bite. I mean, I love it. You just, you're a kid again. You watching a bobber go down. Oh, God, that was. Oh. But I got to watch Cole Stewart and them, Mr. Terry, win it after that because I got to ride in the boat with them. <laughs> <laughs> were, they sli- were they slip corking? No, they was not slip corking. <laughs> they was slipping them two pounders over the side. No, they wasn't slip corking, but I sure was, and I was doing it early. <laughs> but yeah, well, that's I mean, cool. I had, hopefully, everybody at home, uh, you know, get something out of this, and hey, give it a shot. Is there a good what's what would be the ideal size rod to slip cork like spinning rod if you had to pick this is what I would go with probably a six or a seven because yeah. they're they're short enough where you can pitch yeah yeah because some some guys prefer to pitch yeah well if it's if, some people if, can't if, cast if, yeah you're right. right and if, if the rod's longer than seven yeah standing up on a boat if you go to pitch underhand anything longer than seven you're gonna hit the water yeah I got you you know it's 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 just like just, just think about. I, I think a lot of our roots are in bass fishing. A yep. lot of us have yep. done some of it, mm-hmm. and you just think about whenever you were flipping and pitching. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of guys talked about. It's just like a jerk bait rod. Everybody's mm-hmm. like, man, how come? Whenever you bass fishing, you're always using a six foot rod for a jerk bait because it's comfortable. Because well, because you're sitting there going. Yep. And with me, I'm short. A seven footer, I was burying that joker in the water yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. every time. So you had to shorten it up. Well, then a lot of other guys caught on to it, especially that real aggressive yep. type. And right. so it's the same thing. So six, seven foot, um, if you're casting or pitching, um, is perfect. And like I say, it's it's just a lot of fun. And like what we were talking about, 
I think at these shows we forget that there's a lot of people that come through these That's doors. Right. That first of all, there's still a lot of people that come through these doors this weekend that never heard of live scope. Yep. There's yep. a lot of people that come through these doors that don't own a boat. That's right. There's They're, a lot of people that and just a lot started of fish. fishing. Right. Yeah. And and there's also a lot of people who live on lakes that don't have docks. Mm-hmm. Slip here, court. Here, here's your answer. Yep. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Yep. You know, we're well, down at the spillway right now at Ross Barnett. The water's high. They're letting out a lot of water, and you can go down there right now. And I would, there's at least forty people any right given now. day, right now, casting slip bobbers, and they're catching fish. Yep. Oh yeah. So I mean, it's not like uh, you, you can't catch fish, but one way nowadays. Hey, let's look at this, and and it's a cheap setup. It don't cost you much. A bobber yeah. and some stops and a good jig or right. a minor hook, and you're ready to roll. And, and it's it's a year round deal. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So. You know, yesterday when we were talking about this and you were like, well, let's ask so-and-so. And, and I heard you ask three or four other guys, hey, mm-hmm. man, you use slip corks. We're in, yeah, in the spring for about a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're same. Like, no, 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 no. We're talking about mm-hmm. for real using like all year. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just just it's just another tool. Another way. So it's you're saying I fishing. need to have one always rigged up in my boat during the tournament? I, I for sure would especially some of these lakes that y'all are fishing right as rain it will be one rigged up at all times yeah. i'll use it at some point yeah i'll use spooky it. fish man i see that right. coming to such a place yep. oh, yeah especially like you said when it's shallow firing out there to them because i mean everybody knows the l word that we're trying to stay away from live scope but it's hard to live scope under four foot it's hard under five foot mm-hmm. but if you can see movement out there you know what's going on fire to him mm-hmm. let him have it you know and and, and i've heard some people say well it's it's not as accurate because, you know, this fish may be three foot deep and then the next fish is four foot deep and everything else. Okay, I don't know what's so hard about that right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's seri- How quick. It's, it's seriously yeah. that easy. That's easy. Yep. That's and it. so, yeah. You, you just have a lot more control. Yep. I can well, see. all these things that we're talking about today, you can get online and or call Wade up, call these people that Grizzly Jig, they got everything you need. Yep. Yep. 100%. Everything. They probably got everything you need at most big box stores. Yeah. If you want or to keep anywhere. it really simple. Any yeah. bait shop. Yep. Get you a good rod. This. Yeah. I mean, if, if if you really want to get technical, other than the jig and the plastic, you got a dollar in bobber stops. Mm-hmm. These were, the beads were, I don't even know. I guess they was free. There ain't no price on them. But I guarantee you they were not more than a dollar no. and a half, two dollars. And right. that's a so lot of fishing. you got three. And then you got another probably two dollars. You got five dollars in something that's that, not going to get that, hung up. Right. That there again, you're not going to lose. No, it's not. It's not going to die. <laughs> because here's the deal with this setup, the way I've got it, you could lose the jig. You're not losing this. No. Nope. I guess that's another good reason about putting that bobber stop down there as well. Yeah. yeah they don't keep, slide off. Right. If you do get hung up. Yeah. Right. It keeps everything right there. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. I'm going to be firing, because I'm going to be, which I mean, I mostly, when I did it, I was doing it with a minor and split shot, so, but yeah, I got to keep that. That's another one of them little nuggets, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been having a lot of nuggets, I know. <laughs> you mean like? A lot, I've had a bunch of nuggets. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, I can't talk. Hey, I'm all about the nuggets. I ain't going to miss a meal, and if I do, I'll double up the next one. <laughs> I promise you that. Yeah, but well, I right, enjoy fellas. that. I sure appreciate it. I'm Thanks glad you don't. Thanks for coming on, man. I, oh, I can't wait to do this again. Man, I enjoy it. I'm glad you don't fish tournaments a lot because I'm going to have to use it at some point. Oh, you'll. I'm using it. I promise you. And I will hashtag the Huckabee Slipper. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the Huckabee Slipper. The Huck- okay. Huckabee Slipper. There you go. <laughs> Come on. All right. Thank anybody, uh, hit subscribe. Appreciate your uh, support. And uh, till next time, see you later. Check hey, everybody hold on. out. One more thing. Uh oh. I'm going to override. Go ahead. Come on with it. At some point in the comments of this video, tell us some more stuff like this that y'all want to hear us talk Absolutely. about. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You, you, you want to hear me talk about bank fishing or below the dam fishing or all this stuff? It probably won't be me, but we'll find somebody that... Oh, yeah. They'll find somebody that knows about this. Yep. A lot of times, I really think, because I've tried to start a little YouTube thing, just start out, see where it goes, and I have trouble coming up with video ideas because i take a lot of it for granted just like that mm-hmm. i would take that for granted and say well nobody everybody knows how to do that but they don't yeah y'all definitely need to comment what, what do you need to say he's yeah. exactly right yeah absolutely oh, man you, yeah 
It's it, it's mind boggling how many people do not understand this. Uh, and it needs to be shown. Well, is it something simple as that bobber stop on the bottom. Yeah, that's just a little that's, nugget that I learned. I learned oh, when, that today. When, whenever it, it it's it's unreal. Whenever I was actually first came out with this cork, whenever I was with them, yeah, mm-hmm. and I would talk about it in a seminar in passing. Yeah. Everybody have that was the number that one was the thing core. that they wanted to know. Yep. Now, how did you do that? One yep. of them bobber stop deal? What's the yep. bead for? Where do I get And I, I seriously sat one time at this Grizzly Jig show about probably nine years ago, and I retied this thing enough times that I ran a, a <laughs> real out Oh, line. my God. <laughs> because everybody wanted to see it up front. But that was good of you. And I'd sit there and... Then the next person will be like, now what are them? And I'm like, now show oh, me. Okay. Show me. Yeah, I got to see it too. <laughs> Absolutely. But there's a lot of stuff. Just like I said, comment. Let us know. I mean, yeah. Brad and them, they'll find something somewhere. I mean, <laughs> they'll find somebody to tell you about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If I don't know it, I'll be glad. to. I mean, that's why you guys yeah. are here. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. exactly you know, right. Uh, can't thank you guys enough for taking your time. And, and, and yeah. For our viewers, I mean, yep. it's a lot of credit. It goes back to everybody that's helping us out Heck with this yeah. deal. Look up everybody on the social. Check us out if you need something. You still guide? Oh, yeah. Yeah, holler at him. Out there in Oklahoma, what like you? You follow. You follow. Go on out there and you follow. Get you some guide guiding in with the Huckabee slipper. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate <laughs> Thank it. Thank right, you, man. Bubba. Appreciate right, it. Have a good one. We'll see you. Oh, I like them earphones so good. <laughs> Out from Big Muddy River, a place I'll always remember. Cabin on the lake and a fishing pole. Forever here, I'll rest my soul. I can feel my worries drift away.